What is up, guys? Back for another episode. It's the middle of February, and it's literally 80 degrees outside right now. It's crazy. So, with that being said, man, I'm going to get some stuff done to the car. Now, the uh, main thing on the list is I want to ditch the hood latch assembly. Uh, I got hood pins, and those hood pins hold the hood more than tight enough. I'm just going to need to adjust them so that without the latch, it actually stays down. There's not like a huge gap or whatever. Now, uh, I got some other things I want to ditch as well today and a few other things that I want to do since it's really nice outside. So uh, let's get started, man. Man, Z is looking good today in the sunshine. All right, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So with this thing latched, you can see there's a nice little even gap around through there. But if I pop the hood, that's where I have a hood, the hood pin set right now. You can see this massive gap. So basically, I just need to mark these off with the hood latched down like that. Mark how low they need to be right there, and then just screw this thing down. But I'll pop the hood and show you what I'm talking about here in a second. All right, so really I can set the gap at whatever I want. It doesn't have to be exactly where it was latched all the way down. So let me go ahead and get the front bumper off and then we'll go from there. All right, so now you guys see what I'm talking about. Literally get rid of this whole entire latch assembly. Um, there's even parts inside. I can uh, drill these little things out. So yeah, let's get started, man. I'm 100% positive these are just rivets too, so they should just drill right out. Oh yeah, and this cable, get rid of it, trace it all the way inside, get rid of all that, so. Alright man, so I should just need to take off this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt, and should just come right off there. Alright man, the latch comes right off. Now I need to trace this thing and see exactly where all it's connected at. You see right there, I need to do away with this little thing. Alright, so I'm looking at these brackets and let me show you what their purpose is for. Alright, so on the inside of the bumper, you can see these right here and those just kind of slide in there and kind of hold it in place with the light. But I have these things holding it on there, I have the bands on the side, and those along the bottom. So there's no reason for those brackets either. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and ditch those brackets underneath the lights too. With these, it's literally just two bolts, two little bolts on each side. Alright, so just pop this thing up out of the way. Because I need to get to this right here, so I need to get this thing off. And there's just literally a screw right there. And now, it just pops right off there. Come on, really. Alright, it's being a pain, but I got it. So, let me go ahead and there's... I'm going to go ahead and take this thing and move it out of the way. That's to open the fuel door. There's two screws here and here holding that, so let me go ahead and get those off there. Alright, for this thing, let's see. Looks like first just pull this part. Uh, hold on a second. Alright, so to get this thing off, looks like pull straight up out. And So if you guys can see back in here, it's literally just a little rubber plug. Once you pull that out, now I need to cut this thing. So I finally got the outer cable. Now I'm just trying to get the inner cable. Just about. There we go. 
All right. I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping this should just pull right out of there, man. Nice. There we go. And what was? There was a little plug holding it. Sweet. All right, now I am actually going to put this plug back in because my fuse box is really close to that, and you can actually see out into the fender well, so I don't want any water or anything like that getting slung inside here. Alright, got the plug back in, which is a complete nightmare. Alright, for the time being, I'm just going to stuff that for the fuel fuel door opener up in there. Um, eventually, I'll make a look at a little mount for it. Now, as you can see, I'm getting some rust on the dash bar all over. So, I really like to, this summer, pull the dash and the bar and paint it and then leave the dash off. Completely do away with the dash. Because I've already got everything wire loomed, all the wires and everything cleaned up, so it looks really nice underneath. I just need to uh, just leave the center part of the dash bar so I can still maintain this, so I can have all my gauges, heater controls, and all that stuff. Um, so with that being said, I can start ditching uh, all this plastic, so I'm not gonna need it anymore, man. The only plastic I really want to keep is this piece right here, this cover. Just because I get a lot of water that comes down in this area right here and that's the last thing I want to get wet is the fuse box. So I want to keep that covered if anything. And I may end up doing away with that and making some kind of little custom cover. But uh, for now, I'm going to start uh, ditching a lot of stuff, man. Now, reasons why I wanted to keep the dash. This dash was, isn't the original one. The original was tan. Everything in the car was tan. It was so ugly. I hated it. So I ended up buying an aftermarket one. Or not an aftermarket one. Just one off of eBay that was black. I paid like 40 bucks for it. It was crazy. Um, but that being said, the reason why I didn't want to keep it bare was because it was I had a passenger seat in here. And with the passenger seat to pass inspection, I had to have the airbag cover on over there. Well, I've converted my car to just a one-seater, so I can just do my inspections, and if somebody wants to ride in it, I'll always keep the other seat, and slap it in here, and we go for a ride. But with that being said, I'm the only one that's going to see this, so it's only going to look ugly to me, you know what I'm saying? And But I can, I can deal with that. It's a race car. This thing, it's, look at the back of it. It's not really the prettiest in the world. Well, I guess it kind of is, but <laughs> you guys know what I mean. But the thing is, I think once I get the whole dash bar painted and all the wires cleaned up and everything, I can actually make it look really good. So, just bear with me, guys. All right, so another little crazy part of the story. To get this dash, 40 bucks sounds amazing, right? It's crazy. I can't believe I got it for this price. But there's really nothing to the dash because it's like six different pieces, man. The actual dash itself is really just this little piece up and through here tiny little piece back through there back through there and down and just a little bit of a frame underneath there and there the rest of it this middle piece clips on this piece clips on piece there clips on piece right here clips on and this thing right here clips on but this is the airbag well I took the airbag off the bottom but to get each one of these pieces it in black it was like 40 for the dash, then it was 40 for this piece, 40 for that piece, 40 for that piece, $400 for the airbag assembly, which is absolutely insane, but to get it to pass inspection, that's what I had to do. But now I know if you take out your passenger seat, you don't have to have the airbag over here anymore. So with that being said, I'm going to pop this screw out right there and do away with this right here. Alright, so the biggest wire mess that I have left that I had actually forgotten about was right here. This, I'm not really sure what it is yet. I thought it was the sensor for uh, like your key fob when you're wanting to lock and unlock your doors. Not 100%. I'll definitely check that out. This one's a cigarette lighter. Now this, I kept this huge conglomeration of stuff because I thought that during inspection you needed to have your flashers and right at the end of this is where the flasher hooks in. 
but after many inspections it's literally turn your headlights on high beams low beams right turn signal left turn signal brake light reverse nobody's ever said turn your flashers on ever so that's cool because that means i can go ahead and ditch all this wiring right here only keep this leather little uh it's not a fuse panel it's kind of like a connection point for the uh the door right here where all those wires come in and uh computers right here so but i'll be able to ditch like the cigarette lighter thing uh i don't even know what that was for i have no clue it doesn't go to anything important obviously uh this is for the airbag this was the airbag this was the yaw sensor uh, pff, I don't even know what that was for but all this is junk so yeah I can do a lot of ditching of this wiring I'm not gonna do it today because I'm gonna need to wait until I start on the dash project and then once I get the dash out of the way then I can start stripping the wire looms and figure out what I can snip what I can't and all that good stuff all right so as for back in here this is actually my uprev cable so I can hook to my computer and this right here actually I don't know if you guys have ever seen where I the other side of the uprev right there hooks into the diagnostic and I just ran it over here into the center but I can get rid of all those other plugs the only one I need to keep is this one right here and I don't have to keep it I just figured it would be a good thing because I got this little converter plug here. It was for the stereo I used to have. It plugs right into that. And then, should I ever want to run any kind of uh, aftermarket gauges here in the future, which I'm sure I eventually will, I can have a power source with a fuse. So, I definitely want to keep that. Alright, so I went ahead and just tucked up all the wires up out of the way from now looking pretty good um, so later on in the summer whenever I start ditching the dash I'm probably just gonna keep this upper and lower part of the column the plastic on there just so they don't deal with any kind of moisture getting on and in like the, igni the ignition system parts so don't want to deal with any of that mess so that is gonna be it for inside the car man all right, now I need to tackle getting this, this, and this off, and they should just be rivets, so I should just be able to drill these out, but we'll find out. There's nothing. I think I need a bigger drill bit. All right, so I put a bigger drill bit on, and as soon as I hit it, literally spun it right out. So, let's see how it works on the next one. I might have to go all the way through like I was before. Nice, there we go. There we go. Now I'm just going to go ahead and drill those pieces out. Build them out and nice. Another big bracket. All right, so with everything out of the way, now I can close the hood and start setting the height on that. All right, so I don't bore you guys to death. Literally, I'm just going to trial and error this. So, uh, so you take this crescent wrench, hold it on the bottom nut down here. And then take another crescent wrench and loosen this up and then I'll just need to spin this down and just trial and error. Just keep closing the hood until I get it exactly where I want. So let me go ahead and do that and I won't bore you guys with that. And we'll come back whenever I get it set where I need it. Alright man, a lot of trial and error. This side is perfect as you can see. Doesn't move. Now just need to get this side as you can see. But this side is perfect. All right, guys. After eight thousand tries, I finally got it, man. <laughs> the trickiest part is once I get it set, 
I would hold the bottom and then try to tighten it and then this whole thing would spin. I really needed like the same size wrench to hold it down below and up top so that this wouldn't move. But if I can do this one handed here. Go ahead and show you guys. Boom. Right here. Boom. Nothing. Nothing. Perfect man. That is perfect. So now let me go ahead and slap the bumper back up on there and see how the gap's gonna be. All right guys, another thing I'm gonna go ahead and note here is this thing right here. So the idea of this thing, as you can see without it, all this stuff opened. When the air comes through here and enters, it wants to come up into the engine bay. So this essentially blocks it off and keeps all the air just going straight to the radiator. Clearly, I have more than enough air going to the radiator. <laughs> I really don't need that extra tiny little bit. And uh, and I don't really see a bad thing of a little bit of extra air getting into the engine bay and helping get air circulating through there as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and do away with this now. Look at that huge hole. That's awesome. So now, as you can see... That line's actually better than when the latch was on there. That is perfect, man. Perfect. And look at all this stuff, man. Not including the bolts, I have to say that's a pretty good day for ditching weight, man. Alright, man, and as you guys know, this is definitely my favorite part of getting the work done. So I got a few more things I want to do, but it's starting to get a little dark. I haven't driven my car since Christmas, been two and a half months, so I just fired the car up. I'm gonna go take a cruise. We'll get back at this tomorrow, man. Peace. What's up, guys? New day. Uh, got a few more things I'm gonna do today that I didn't get to do yesterday, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and finally fix where I was having the rust issues or whatever. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bed liner this. I already got it all clean, scuffed, and all that. And I actually found these nice little brushes at Lowe's. It's going to be perfect for getting right up inside these little cracks and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right, man. So while that first coat that I just put on there is drying, I'm going to go ahead and take this off and this off and get it all nice and cleaned up. And this is incredibly simple. Literally just the four bolts. And bolt here, bolt here, one here. And then uh, you got to loosen this thing all the way up. I'll show you when we get to that point. All right, so if you get this annoying bolt out, I literally wish I would have had a deep well or like a ratcheting socket type thing. <laughs> or ratcheting wrench, I mean. I did it with this and it took so long. All right, let's get up in here. Pop this little last thing right there off. And then you take this right here. It literally just pulls out right like that. That's it. Just slides, see how it kind of slides right up to that grooving end? That easy, man. Alright, so I'm going to try to clean up the threads on this thing, and I got an idea. So I was having trouble, like, getting uh, my rotors to clean up, man. I was like, good lord, because I was just trying to burn them off and burn them off, and they just kept grinding. I'm like, man, it's got to be tearing up my pads. So I actually got some uh, distilled white vinegar. And I brought it out and I just had a little spray ball and I just kept spraying it on the rotors like every 15 minutes. And finally, after about an hour of that, I came out with a rag and wiped them off and check this out. And there we go. Things look amazing again. And all that rust that was in there, slowly starting to get it. And there's what the front ones look like. So I figure what I'll do is like from now on, about an hour before I go wash the car, I'll just come out here about every 15 minutes, spray this with vinegar. Uh, this second because I want to get all that cleaned up again 
and inside there you can see that and then after about an hour I take the car wash the high pressure hose and wash it and guarantee about two or three weeks of doing that these things will look brand new man all right so I actually just use the uh, scotch bright pad and actually actually just scuffed up a little bit and now I can just put it on by hand so that's cool all right so instead of doing what I normally do every year and using these steel wool pads sitting here in the living room scrubbing like crazy forever on these things I've got a new plan now I'm gonna need a bigger pan for that perfect perfect Alright man, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this stuff in here and uh, just keep coming back and check on it every hour. See what it looks like, see if it starts eating through. The main reason why I'm leaving it in here is because this stuff stinks so bad man, it's a terrible smell. You don't want to smell it. Alright, so I'm waiting for this first one to dry here. Getting close, and I go ahead and put another one on there. Alright man, so I'm not going to bore you guys with that. Uh, I'll go ahead and put another coat or two on here in a minute. and. Uh, That'll be good to go and let that stuff in the bathroom soak overnight and then uh, we'll check it out tomorrow morning. So uh, see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace. What up, guys? It's another day. Uh, so got that finished. Nice. Got those finished. Like you can see, it looks so much better, man. Now, I don't know for a fact, I didn't spend as much time on this one right here, like cleaning it up the next day, because everything came right off of the vinegar, but then it just kind of needed a little bit of scrubbing to get the extra little bit. And one thing I'd like to know, if you guys know, man, throw it down in the comments, so like, can I just go ahead and uh, clear coat these the way they are? Is there any kind of special prep, or can I just clear coat them like they are so I don't have to keep doing this, man? So uh, you guys let me know, man. All right, man, so one last thing I want to get done here that I actually forgot about when I was messing with the, the latch is getting rid of this latch and assembly right here. So I'm not concerned about all this up in here. I just want the metal section out, so I'm just going to dremel out just this right here. And that would be perfect. All right, man, got the cutting wheel and the dremel. Figured it would be a good idea to cover everything up like that. So let's get started, man. Man, they molded that thing in there so good and so like thick. I'm assuming so it could take withstand all the abuse and pressure and everything. Like my Dremel wheel wouldn't cut all the way through. Now I got it on the sides. Dremel cut all the way through on both sides, but right here on this part and the bottom part, you can see up in there how thick it is. Crazy. So I'm actually use have to use a grinder sometime to get that the rest of the way out. But it's all good. This thing should definitely cut through there, man. All right, so I uh, actually changed my mind, and because I'm using that thing, I don't want to take a chance of going too far and catching the hood, so I'm going to do it like angle, you know what I mean? So cut it right here, and then I'll just do little slits, and then same thing here. So I have plenty of room, so I don't have to take any chance of actually going through and getting to this. All right, guys, got it hacked out of there. And instead of just dealing with this, I just went ahead and hacked a big section. It was like, once I got in there, I kind of got a little crazy and started hacking away. <laughs> now, I could actually go and hack a lot of this plastic out of the way, like along the edges, but with the engine bay, it's a silly idea because that's going to help with blocking the heat from actually getting up here and trashing my hood twice as fast as it already does. Like on the hatch, I could definitely do that on the hatch. It wouldn't hurt a thing. But uh, on the hood, it's definitely need to leave that or it's just gonna trash the hood really fast. What's up, guys? 
It's actually a couple days later because uh, I got my taxes on uh, Friday morning. Started making a bunch of calls, ordering all kinds of stuff, blowing through that money, man. <laughs> actually, as you can see, just sent TH Motorsports $1,000. Hmm, what's that for? Actually, the only thing that sucks about this is they're completely out of stock on this, so they're going to have to start making me what I just ordered. Um, and I think they said lead time was 4 to 12 weeks, as it always is. And uh, kind of sucks, but I really need to wait a little farther in the summer when the weather's really nice because I'm not just going to install this thing like other people have installed it. I'm actually, and I've done so much research, and I've only seen one other car that's done it like this and it was actually done factory like this um, and that is the uh, Nismo version the 380 RS if you guys actually uh, check that car out man you'll probably figure out what I'm talking about and what I'm gonna do because I don't want to install it like everybody else I'm gonna do it completely different I'm gonna be the test dummy for this and uh, it's gonna be pretty insane I can't wait I'm so excited man so yeah make sure you guys stay tuned man because there's a lot of stuff coming uh, if you guys like the video, man, make sure you smash that thumbs up. <laughs> you guys are new to the channel, man. Hit that subscribe button. You want to see some more of my content. And uh, peace.